Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing an LSD post hoc test using Microsoft Excel. LSD stands for Least Significant Difference, and we use it after we perform an ANOVA to see where the difference is. So, looking at these fictitious data I have loaded in this Excel workbook, we have three groups here uh, CBT, group therapy, and treatment as usual. Let's assume that all these scores here are from an assessment that's designed to measure functioning. So when we conduct an ANOVA, we'll determine if we have a statistically significant difference overall, but we won't know which pairs have a significant difference between them. For example, CBT and group, group and treatment as usual, or CBT and treatment as usual. We won't know where the differences are. We just know that overall there would be a difference if we found one with ANOVA. The LSD post hoc test can be used with equal sample sizes or unequal sample sizes. And for this example, I have unequal sample sizes. So the sample size for CBT, group, and treatment as usual, all three sample sizes are different. So first I'm going to conduct an ANOVA using these data. And I'm going to do that from the data ribbon up top and then the data analysis function to the right. If you don't have this data analysis function on the ribbon, go to File and then Options, and that'll bring up this Excel Options dialog. Just go to Add-ins, and then at the bottom it says Manage Add-ins, Manage Excel Add-ins, click Go, and make sure you have Analysis Tool Pack checked off here in the Add-ins variable list box and click OK. So from data analysis, I'm going to go to ANOVA single factor and click OK. And I already have this populated. The input range here is going to be A1 through C31. So the labels and all the data. Grouped by columns, I do have labels in the first row, CBT, group, and treatment as usual. The alpha is set by default to 0 0.05. I'm going to leave it there. And I've changed the output options, so I'm using an output range, and it's going to be cell F1. So click OK to perform the ANOVA. And we can see we have the three groups, CBT, group, treatment as usual, and the sample sizes for each group, as well as the average scores for each group. Those values are in the summary table. Down here in the ANOVA table, of interest to us would be the degrees of freedom within and the mean squares within. To determine if we have a statistically significant finding for this ANOVA, we're going to use the p-value and we can see it's 0 0.003. So it is below 0 0.05, so it's statistically significant. So now we have to find where the difference or differences are in these three groups. So overall, we have a statistically significant finding, but we don't know where the differences are. So down here in the bottom right, I have the equation for the least significant difference. And it's equal to t with a specified alpha and degrees of freedom, so the, the critical value of t at, in this case, 0 0.05 and 80 degrees of freedom, times the square root of the mean square within times 1 over the first sample size plus 1 over the second sample size. So moving here to this table that I've constructed, you see I have alpha, degrees of freedom within, and mean square within. So the alpha here I'm going to set at 0 0.05. So I'm just going to input 0 0.05. For degrees of freedom within, this will be equal sign, and I'm just going to reference the degrees of freedom within from the ANOVA table. That value is 80, 80 degrees of freedom. And you have the mean square within. Again, I'm just going to reference this directly from the ANOVA table, 33.29, which is displayed as 33.3 .3 because of the number of digits to the right of the decimal being displayed in this cell. So now I can make the calculations I need for LST 
and I'm first going to start with the critical value of t. And that's going to be equal sign t dot inv dot 2t, the two-tailed inverse of the student's t distribution. And you have the probability and then the degrees of freedom. The probability, I'm going to reference the alpha, 0 0.05, and then degrees of freedom is here under degrees of freedom within 80. And that critical value is 1.99. So that's that value of t there in this equation. Next I'll calculate the other part of this equation and I'm going to start with this section parentheses. So this will be equal sign and 1 divided by the first sample size. So in this case let's compare the CBT group with the group therapy group. So we have CBT and group therapy. So for 1 over n, this is going to be 1 over 28, because the sample size here for CBT is 28. Then I'm going to add 1 divided by 30 for the group sample size. So that gives us 0 0.07. Next I'll multiply the 0 0.07 times the mean square within. So this will be equal sign 0 0.07 times mean square within. That gives us 2.3. And then I'll take the square root of that value. That'll be SQRT and then 2.3. Gives us 1.52. So now we need to multiply this value, 1.99 and 1.52. I'll do that here. Equal sign 1.99 times 1.52. This gives us 3.02. Next I'm going to compare this value, 3.02, to the absolute value of the mean differences. So in this case, this will be the CBT and the group therapy levels. So we have a mean score for the CBT group of 48.4. And for the group therapy level, the mean is 53.6. So I want the absolute value of the difference between these two means. I'll calculate that here. The equal sign ABS for absolute value and the CBT mean minus the group therapy mean. That gives us a value of 5.169. This value is greater than 3.02, so we would say that we do have a statistically significant finding between the CBT and group therapy levels. If the absolute value of the mean difference was less than 3.02, we would say we do not have statistical significance. Now here I've only compared the CBT level with the group level. For a complete comparison, you'd want to compare CBT to treatment as usual and group to treatment as usual as well. So for a comparison, I'm going to run the same analysis in SPSS. I already have the fictitious data inputted into the data editor. We have the CBT group therapy and treatment as usual levels defined and we have our functioning variable. I go to analyze, general linear model and univariate. Program will be the fixed factor functioning the dependent variable and under post hoc I move program over here to post hoc test 4 and check off LSD under equal variances assumed. Click continue and click OK and of interest will be this multiple comparisons table LSD here and we have CBT and group we can see the mean difference negative 5.17 and we have a statistically significant finding 0 0.001 so whether using SPSS or Excel we get the same result using the LSD the difference here 5.169 this is displaying this way instead of 5.17 because of the number of digits to the right of the decimal displayed in this cell.
I hope you found this video on conducting an LSD postdoc test in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.